The University of British Columbia is not only one of the world's leading universities, it's also a place where we strive to respect and protect human rights, and where equity and inclusion are embedded in all areas of academic work and campus life. Yet there is still work to be done to ensure UBC is a welcoming and inclusive place. This video is part of the wider effort to help foster an environment of inclusion and respect at UBC. To ensure that all student staff and faculty have the tools they need This video will define gender identity and expression, as well as specific terminology like trans, two-spirit, and gender non-binary. It will also outline some great practices to enhance your work with gender diverse peoples, whether they are students, staff, or faculty here at UBC. In North America, Often when a person is born, they're designated a gender based on the anatomy they have. This is called sex assignment at birth, and it's expected to, but doesn't necessarily, correspond to one's gender. Often gender identities are based on the same sex assigned at birth, which is then reinforced by others, such as family members, peers, teachers, and even strangers over a course of a person's life. This can limit a person's understanding of gender as a binary, rather than a more inclusive spectrum. It makes it harder to fit in and feel a sense of belonging or connection to a community. In the model or the idea of binary gender, there are only two genders, men and women. Binary gender is the model that excludes many people's gender identities. In fact, bodies and gender can be largely separate. Gender identity is self-determined. It's what is between a person's ears. Their internal sense of self. And personal experience of gender. Everyone defines this sense of identity for themselves. Gender expression is how a person presents their gender to the world. It includes how we express our gender through our clothes or our hairstyles. And even our names and pronouns. Remember though, we can't assume to know someone's gender identity through their gender expression alone. Some of these terms are Two-spirit Transgender Non-binary Gender non-conforming Cisgender Two-spirit is a cultural and gender and sexual identity specific to Indigenous people. It is an umbrella term used by many Indigenous people in Canada and the United States, or what we would call Turtle Island. There is also great diversity in community-specific terms in different Native languages that people may use. Importantly, all of these terms hold deep meaning for Indigenous people. Transgender is an umbrella for people whose gender identity does not match the sex they were assigned at birth. There is no one way, not a right way to be transgender. Some transgender people identify as a man. Some transgender people identify as women. Some transgender people identify as non-binary. Non-binary or genderqueer people may express a combination of masculinity and femininity or neither in their gender expression. Gender non-conforming describes modes of gender identity and expression where a person does not express their gender identity in typical ways relative to their sex assigned at birth. When a person identifies with the gender that corresponds to the sex they were assigned at birth and they present that gender to the world, they are called cisgender. It is always best to use the labels and terms provided by the people who identify with them. Remember though, it's not about knowing all the latest terms. The most important part is being open to diversity when you encounter it. Inclusive language is more than just language devoid of offense. It is language that includes all of us. Rather than addressing a group with the traditional Ladies and gentlemen, which reinforces the gender binary, used participants audience members, students, staff or faculty. Folks, people, or my favorite, y'all. 
Or you can add non-binary folks to the end to include everyone. Think about all the places gendered language shows up. From paperwork that forces people to mark one or two gender options. Or to choose a gendered prefix such as Mr. or Mrs. Inclusive language is an easy way to ensure everyone feels welcome. Pronouns are the words that we use in place of someone's name when we refer to them in the third person. Using people's pronouns and names are a great way to be inclusive on campus. There are gendered pronouns, such as he, him, his, and she, her, hers, as well as non-gendered pronouns like they, them, theirs. Anyone can use any pronoun, regardless of how they express their gender. Plus, there are more pronouns than just he and she. Today, the use of gender neutral pronouns such as they, them, theirs is more common and we need to respect that at UBC. By simply asking the question, and how do you like to be referred? When we use this question as a basic and fundamental part of introductory conversations, like when we're getting to know each other. We're taking key steps towards a more inclusive campus. Asking someone directly about what pronouns they use or how they like to be referred to, may feel a little awkward, especially at first. That's okay. It may not be conversations we are used to having. Once we open up to having these conversations more regularly, they will feel less awkward. Best of all, it signals to our UBC community that we want to be respectful and inclusive. If anyone asks why you want to know, it's very easy to say that you don't want to make assumptions. And that you often ask people so that you know for sure. Think of it this way. It's far more respectful to ask a person when you greet them, Hey, what pronouns do you use? Than continuously using the wrong ones for them. Similarly, it is important to always refer to people by the name they identify with. Which is typically the name they use to introduce themselves. It might not be the same as the name listed on legal paperwork. If there is an option to use the preferred name, please do so. Or ask to be certain. If you have to ask for a legal or birth name, it is best to do so in private. And never refer to somebody by their legal birth name if it's different from a preferred name or the name they actually use. As this may out them to their colleagues, employers or other members of the UBC community. It is always best to ask first. It can take some time to get used to using a different name or different pronouns for a person. That's okay. Once you learn someone's name or their pronouns, practice using them. For instance, talking out loud about someone in the third person can help commit the name pronoun to memory. If you notice someone else struggling to get a person's name or their pronouns correct, consider modeling how to use them. It removes the burden from the two-spirit trans and gender non-conforming people and makes acknowledging pronouns the responsibility of our whole community. Respect means always using people's chosen pronouns and names, even if they aren't within earshot of the conversation. If you do make a mistake, which happens, and use the wrong name or pronoun, acknowledge the mistake, but don't make a big deal out of it. Making a big deal out of it draws more attention to the situation and can make that person feel very visible and even more uncomfortable. Building inclusive environments means creating an opportunity for all people to identify their pronouns when getting to know each other. There are many great reasons for respecting people's gender identities and affirming their gender expressions. It is also the law here in British Columbia and policy at the University of British Columbia. There are three important policies to be aware of that protect transgender and gender non-conforming people. In 2016, the BC Human Rights Code was updated to include protections for gender identity and expression. And at UBC, Policy 3 addresses discrimination and harassment on the grounds protected by the BC Human Rights Code. Policy number three has also been updated to include gender identity and expression. And finally, our Respectful Environment Statement explains that the best possible environment for working, learning, and living is one based on respect, civility, diversity, opportunity, and inclusion. Creating this type of environment is the responsibility of all of us at UBC. How can we work together? How can we all work together? How can we all work together? To put gender inclusivity into practice, when we speak and refer to people at UBC.